All right, hey there. So today we are going to learn how to make the classic wanted poster on Pixlr Editor. Now, Pixlr Editor, if anyone there has used Photoshop before, it is very similar, except that it is free. It is simpler and it is also cloud based. So you could do it entirely within your browser, which makes it nice. And this will teach us about layering and just sort of Give, uh, give us an intro into how to use Pixlr Editor or any photo manipulation uh, software such as Photoshop. And when we are done, we will have something similar to that. And that beautiful face right there is me. So when you go to Pixlr Editor and the link is in the description, you will be brought up to this menu. And the background of what we're going to have is just going to be a template for a wanted poster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab. It's not going to be template. It's going to be, oh, it's going to do wanted poster uh, template. Do a little search on that and we'll go right over here to Google image and this could work for any background that you want to do. It, it's that it, you could pick any sort of, um, different type of image that you want to manipulate and put yourself in, whether that be winning the Super Bowl or walking on the moon. You can do that as well. Um, and you're going to be brought to this page. Now, you have to be um, uh, prepared to not just pick the first image that you see because Pixar Editor, it can open up several types of images, but it can't open up all of them. So what we need to do to get it to only the types of images that Pixar Editor can open Let's go over to the settings in Google image. And if we go right here to advanced search, we can go down here and you can see file type and Pixar editor supports JPEG. And I know PNG, I'm pretty sure it supports GIF or GIF or however you pronounce that. And, but I'm going to pick JPEG. You can't go wrong with JPEG and just do advanced search. And now we know that all of these images that we see are going to be supported. And I'm going to pick this one. And um, if you click on here, make sure you actually click on it and don't just do this with the image from Google image or else it will not be as high of a quality. And if you go back to this tab here, you can see open, um, open image from URL. We want to go here and we want to right click and copy the image URL. Now we'll put that onto the clipboard. Then we're going to go right here to open image from URL. And I'm just going to paste that right there and it will load the image and you have the wanted poster right there. Now, once it opens, it will open up your little toolkit here and there are several different options. We will use as many of these as possible to sort of get you acquainted with how Pixlr Editor works. But basically this, these are your tools right here. These are your layers, which we will go over very soon. And this is your history. So if you make a mistake, you can just go back in your history and get back whatever image you had before you made that dreaded mistake that you just want to get rid of right now. Now, in order to get a picture on to uh, your background there, you have to take your own picture, obviously. So what I did is I used an iPad to take a picture of myself and then I loaded it on to my computer uh, using I believe iTunes or whatever software they have installed. So that is already on my computer. However, you want to get the image onto your computer is fine with me, but you need to go to open your image. And this is it right here, right saved right to my desktop. And I am going to open it. And that is me right there. Now, one of the problems with Pixar Editor is if I were to just take this picture and put it onto this smaller picture, it would cut off a lot of me. So what I want to do is I want to transform it using the free transform tool. So if I go here, you'll notice it will also be control T. I will be doing that for the rest of the tutorial, but just to show you how this works, if you go to free transform, you will be brought to this right here and you can control the size and the dimensions of your image. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to make it smaller. If you hold shift, it will stay constant or the uh, ratio will stay constant no matter what you do. So I could go all over here. It's still not going to get warped. And I want to make sure that it is small. Oh, I want to apply the changes and I want to make sure that it is smaller than this picture right here. 
Now what I want to do is I don't want to select that whole picture. I want to pick just a portion of my head that I want to use in the picture. There are several ways of doing this. You can go over here and you can see there's a square and a circle and you can just drag it and select the square. Um, I'm just going to go back. You can see the history right here. If I want to just go back to where I was before, I can just click there and it completely forgets that I did that square. And I can try the circle as well. And another thing you can do is control V and that will deselect anything that you have. Uh, but what I'm going to do is this lasso tool right here. And this, you could make way more precise uh, cuts into your image if you use this lasso tool. And there's two types of the lasso tool. Tool. There is the free one where you just draw whatever you want around, connect it, you know, control D to deselect it. Or there is this one which anchors different spots around and it makes straight lines between those two different anchors. And that is the one that I am going to use here. Uh, but whatever image you are using, you can decide what you want to do. I think the anchored lasso is probably the most varied and the best one for most things that you're going to be using. So all you do is just tap it and then tap it and just make a little outline around the image that you want. As close to as there as possible. And then reconnect. And I am going to just copy and paste just like you would in Word or anything else. I'm going to Command C, that will copy it. And then Command V to paste. And you can see that I am right there. Although it's just it's sloppy and there's background all over the place and I'm sideways and all things of all sorts of things are wrong here. Uh, but we are going to fix this now. So if I go back to free transform, remember you could do it out of the menu there. But what I'm going to do is control T because it's easier. And I am just going to find this here. Where is it? Yeah, the little circle arrow thing. And I'm just going to turn the picture around like that. I'm going to press enter to apply the changes. And it's still a little big. So I'm going to control T again. And I'm just going to fit it, not using shift this time. I'm going to stretch my face. I'm going to make myself fatter. And I'm going to get it as close as possible. OK. Now, you can still see that there's all of this junk around me here. There's several ways of kind of getting rid of this. We can use the eraser and erase some. And you can see these layers over here. And right now, I am selected on my layer. And how layers work is that it allows you to edit images um, doing only certain parts of it. So let's say I were to make a new layer and I, was, I just wanted to draw all over it. And oh my god, that, is, um, that, that, that looks horrible. My, my picture's ruined. However, it's not because I can get rid of this letter, uh, this layer first. I could just unclick it and hide it. So that will get rid of that. Or I could show it again. I could just delete it. So layers are the basic foundation of doing any sort of uh, photo manipulation. And you can see if I take my eraser right here, it will only erase my image because that's what's selected right there, not the background. And that becomes very helpful. So what we are going to do, we could do that, but a simpler thing to do is to use this little magic wand. And the magic wand will figure out what color it is looking at, and it will go up to the edges of that. So if I were to click right here, see how I could just sense that there is that little white thing right there? And I'm just going to press delete. And do it again down here, delete. Do it right here, delete. And it's a very useful tool. And there's one more, and delete. And now there's still a little bit of outline right there. So I'm going to take my eraser tool. Oh, this is important. See how there's still a little bit of selection there? That means that it will only, uh, it will only erase within that selection. So you want to make sure that you deselect everything before you try to do the eraser. 
and we want to get that out of the way there and that is just perfect now here you want to make sure that you do not erase your head because that will happen and if you're having trouble seeing things so you see this little magnifying glass right there you could just click on as much as you want it's kind of got a little it's got a little messed up here but that's all right and you can control the size of your brush up here Uh, that's fine and you could also you know, see if that's zoomed into 150 if i were to zoom it to 100 it's still a little big we can get whoops not 180 let's just try 80 that looks pretty good and you could also just click here and i forget which one it is zoom yeah control and zoom out and there you are right there now this looks pretty good. I can still make it, I can still move it around like that. And I could still make it a little bit wider to fit. There we go. Looks pretty good. And however, the colors are a little off. You can see this kind of old timey wanted poster, but there I am with just my blue shirt and my colored face and full bodied and all that. And I, I don't want that. So what I want to do is if you go up here to adjustment, you could change how the colors of everything in that picture. So for example, if I wanted to change the color balance, I can make it more red like that. And you can see my face getting red like I'm sunburned, or you can take all the red out and you could play around with this how you want to if you can get to look natural and if you click okay it will stay like that however that looks really weird and i clearly do not want that so i'm going to use my history tool here and i'm going to get rid of it one that does work well for me is these are more these are done already you have the sepia and you also have the old time photo i'm going to try the old time photo here and again it's a it's better but it's a little off from the overall tone of the poster so i'm going to go back in my history tool and I'm gonna use the sepia. And for me, I think that is the best one for what we are doing right here. And that is pretty much your wanted poster. If you go up here to file, save as, um, if you don't finish it all in one sitting, you can go here to format and you could ch um, save it as a pixel or layered image. And from there, you can open it back up and edit it within Pixar editor. And that's a good idea to do throughout because if your browser shuts down, it does not automatically save and you will lose all of your progress. I probably should have been saving throughout the tutorial here, but I did not, sorry. Um, and if you want to save it as a JPEG, that will just save as a picture on to your computer. So if I have wanted tutorial, save as a JPEG, I'll save it onto my desktop. That image is saved. And now if I go to my desktop and I open that up, it opens right there into my picture viewer. And that is an introduction to Pixlr Editor and how you can make a wanted poster or some other manipulated image on this program. So I hope you learned something and had a good time. Thanks.